if there was such a thing as a CCIE level equivalent lab exam for Azure Networking, then this diagram and the problem it manifests could be one of the scenarios on that test. If you look at this diagram here, can you see a possible problem? The answer is probably no, because you have to dig into the details to understand why. So let's do that now, because it's kind of interesting, and it highlights the value of route maps, which is a feature in public preview for VWAN. If you have this problem, then you can be aware of the fix. We'll also talk through some of the other fixes and workarounds to the problem. Let's first of all explain the problem. So we've got a virtual WAN here in blue with three hubs. So global virtual WAN, these hubs here are in Europe. This is kind of a satellite hub, a different area of the world, let's say US, for example. Let's say the customer's migrating to this. And then over here on the left-hand side in red, we've got a legacy environment for the customer based on regular HubSpark environment, which they're migrating away from with a regular existing virtual network gateway, express route gateway there. And they have express route circuits, just drawn them as one blob here at the moment. And they have on-prem down there. And as that's common uh, pattern we see for a period of time when you've got spokes over here and spokes over here, we leverage the express route hairpin to facilitate the transport between the two environments. Uh, obviously we should keep that period of time as short as possible. We shouldn't be relying on equipment in the edge network to route in Azure, but sometimes needs must. And let's say we acknowledge that risk and requirement to make this migration as soon as possible. Sometimes that's protracted. Sometimes you need this flow for a longer period of time. In our VWAN here, we've got a global VWAN, three hubs, routing intent everywhere, firewalls everywhere. So all traffic goes through all firewalls, we've got inter-region routing, et cetera, et cetera. Now uh, in this diagram, the problem we have is, let's say we have a spoke over here trying to communicate to this spoke over here hanging off our satellite US hub. Traffic leaves this gateway, goes to our circuit. The circuit then has to make a decision. How do I get to this prefix? Well, the prefix is learned from both VWAN hubs and the metrics are identical. Prefix length, same, AS path, the same. So the circuit can use either this path or this path. Let's say a particular flow goes across the top path to this VWAN hub into the gateway, through the firewall, across into hub transport, through the firewall, down into the spoke. Let's do the return path in orange. The spoke then has to return the traffic. Well, it's using routing intent, so it knows nothing apart from send it to my local firewall. That firewall then says, how do I get back to this spoke over here? And that's where our problem rears its head because VWAN has kind of got the same challenge. Like, do I go to the top or do I go to the bottom? I'm learning the route from my sort of remote express route gateways and the route looks the same. The route's just coming from here. And VWAN will pick one of those paths. It will pick this path perhaps. So you see now we've got an asymmetry. We've got traffic coming in via purple on firewall A and leaving our orange via firewall B. Whether that's an NVA or an, N an Azure firewall, those firewalls won't like that. They're going to drop the traffic. It's uh, stateful firewalling, only see one side of the conversation. So we have a problem. We have traffic flows not working due to asymmetry. So if we need this pattern, how do we fix it? Well, if it was on-prem, we have more options because we have control of the AS path, etc. But because it's coming from an Azure VNG, and because it's coming from a common circuit, we have limited ability to control the path. Let me show you the problem in a bit more detail. If we dive into the circuit, if I go to this circuit here and I look at the effective routes, this is my spoke hanging off my VWAN hub in the US. And you can see my circuit, it's got four paths to it. Two via the top VWAN hub, two via the bottom VWAN hub, which is representing the problem we talked about. It knows about it in both directions. When I look at the effective routes on Azure Firewall inside of the V1 Hub C, and I look for the other spoke in the other region, we see that there's only one path back for that prefix, and it's via one single hub. And this is the AS path. 
So this is V1 interhub 65520, and then Tor076 is representing the express route transit. So this is just another way of saying we've got asymmetry from top to bottom. How can we solve it? Well, route maps is the best way to fix this if we want the most resilient design. Of course, one way of fixing it is just to disconnect our circuit from the top hub, and thereby we've only got one way in, one way out. But then we have a lack of resilience, we have to reconnect this circuit in a DR event. Now, if we use route maps, which like I say are in preview, we have the ability to, on these hubs, set certain BGP level and uh, layer 3 routing level configuration. We can look at routes when they come in based on their subnet mass, communities, AS path, and then set summarization and set prepends. So what I've done here is in my route maps, maybe I'll just switch to a split screen view to show you this better. So here I am looking at my top virtual WAN hub, the one the, the top path is the one we do not want to use. We want to make the path symmetrical from V1C both in and out via the bottom hub. And to do that, we're going to use prepend. And these are my route maps. So I've got the top route map for outbound and then another route map for inbound. And if we look at the route maps, so my in statement matches the VNet over here. So when the route matches this, prepend additional values, additional AS paths, when the route propagates into VWAN. So that's the purple path here. So when that when this route comes in this way, add a plus three prepend when the route leaks across VWAN into hub and into other parts of VWAN, which will mean the bottom path is preferred. And then my other route map, the outbound route map, is taking this route, which is my prefix associated with the green one over there, it's saying whenever this leaves VWAN, prepend. And I've got that associated, both of those route maps associated to my express route connection here. Now, when I've done that, you can see it's had an impact on our circuit level routing information. You can see I've now got still four routes, but two of those have got a longer AS path. And those are the two that are coming from these next hops, which are my top hub. So the impact of applying those route maps to that connection means that when my circuit chooses how to get to my VWAN remote spoke, it's going to pick either this one or this one, which both go to the bottom hub. Uh, similarly, when I look over here at my Azure Firewall config, at the effective routes, I know that the top path will not be used because the bottom path is preferred due to a shorter AS path. Now, it's a bit different when you look in the effective routes for a Azure Firewall in VWAN because you're seeing effectively the effective routes which are taking place. You're not seeing the entire BGP routing table like you are with the express route circuit there. So we only see the one effective route saying it always goes to the bottom hub. But just to show that the AS path does propagate across into hub, I flip the prepend and you can see that you can indeed influence and add your own prepends. I did plus one in this case. And this diagram is just, again, talking through what we said. The, the overall logic when we apply this config is we always end up sending our traffic to V1B when it goes this way. And V1C always returns the traffic this way. Could there be other ways of fixing this? Yes, but um, I would say once route maps are GA, then route maps will be the preferred solution. As we said, you could just disconnect this circuit. You could do complex solutions where you snat uh, on the firewalls in both directions. But of course, that's going to impact how on-prem sees your traffic. And again, just to reiterate, the, the longer term goal here is to get any spokes here that are attached to the old world, get them attached to the new world, and the problem goes away. Uh, there are some other solutions you could look at here, which would be 
V1C could be directly connected to your express route circuit. So you can have an express route gateway here, and then you have no problem with traffic coming in here and here because traffic always comes in here and always goes out here due to the local route being preferred. But in our case, if this is in the US and this is in Europe, you would need to upgrade that circuit to premium and that's obviously got a cost implication. Anyway, that was just a quick informal tech video showing how route maps will help you with some scenarios in Azure. A route maps, of course, will be useful for on-prem routing and other scenarios in the future. But thanks for watching and I'll catch you soon.